Hi, I'm Leslie Chesterman, and we're in Montreal in my kitchen with Jennifer McLagan, who is a cookbook author who I've written about two other times, and this time we're talking about your new book called Bitter. And it's a great book, and we spent the day cooking bitter dishes. That's right. And I wanted to finish off with a video of us doing cocktails, because we can talk about bitter foods like Brussels sprouts and rapini. rapini and grapefruit, but there's a huge wave of cocktails now that are bitter, and they're also in your book. That's true. So teach us something about this. Well, I think the easiest bitter cocktail to start with is Campari, right? Campari is red, it's pretty, and right. it's bitter like by itself, but if you mix it with something else, it's much more easy to take. So we're just going to put the Campari in here. Campari is really common. I mean, it's kind of a yeah, summer it, drink. Oh, yeah, it's, it's good in the wintertime, too. There's nothing wrong. And you okay. want to have some orange juice with it. That's okay. always good. Campari and orange. Could you do Campari and grapefruit? You could do Campari and grapefruit. Okay. I just like orange. It's just a little bit sweeter than the grapefruit. The grapefruit's right. still bitter. Right. So Top be that up with, with a bit of soda. Okay. And then we'll give that a stir to mix it all up. It's like a tequila sunrise. Well, at the moment it is. <laughs> with no tequila. And then, like, garnish it with a little bit of orange. And try that. I can try? Okay. Let's go. How's that? That's very good. I like it a lot better than yeah. I thought, yeah. than I remembered. Very good. Okay, that's Campari. Next. Now, the next one probably is less familiar to people. This is Suze, very I popular. Love I love this. Old ladies in France drink this all the time. It's the old lady in France drink, and it's very bitter, and it's fantastic. It's made with all kinds of weird things. It's Herbs made with an or... alpine plant that's extremely bitter. Right. So we're going to put, you see it's got a beautiful color. The color is crazy. Yeah, the color is right. really. It's like greenish. It's like absinthe a bit. Right? Yes, the it color. is exactly yeah. the same thing. And I like to mix this one with grapefruit juice to keep the bitterness. Right. Don't drink it alone because it tastes a bit like cough syrup. Yeah, like a lot of these, a compared, lot of these lot bitter of... things, because they were originally medicines, right? They do have that kind of medicinal cough syrupy right. taste. Right. Little cough we'll just syrup. give this a little bit of a stir, right? And see what you think of that one. In your book, you made a sorbet with this too. This yes, really is a sorbet. Yeah. It's an interesting. Uh, it's a very interesting taste. Different, totally from Campari. I love this. It's bitter, this but really it's a good. different flavor from Campari. And right? in Quebec, twenty-five dollars at the SAQ. Fantastic. Okay. You can find it before you could. Now you can. Now you can also mix Sue's again. This is my friend told me this in a restaurant. She came from the southwest of France where they drank a lot of Sue's, and her parents made this drink for her. Mm. See the color again? How beautiful it is! And she, they put in just a little of creme de cassis. Creme de cassis. You... This one is from Mona et Fille, and it's a uh, Quebec product. And oh, this it's is about delicious. twenty-five dollars too, and it's one of the best. And really, it's really sweet. Good. Right. And it's like, it's just like, it's just one of those drinks that... Retro glass. Yeah, retro, and it's like, you don't make too much of it because it's quite strong. Because you're putting two alcohols in there, remember? Very old school. Very retro. Cla a little bit sweet more than bitter. Yeah, because it, the cassis, the cassis is, is strong. So once you get used to that bitterness, you can put less cassis and more Sue's in there. Okay, I would do that. I'd make it more bitter. Yeah. Now, rapini, we could put some rapini in there. No, 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 I won't do that. No, no. Brussels sprouts, okay. Okay, now, if you've had too many of these cocktails... Right. This is probably what you might want to be drinking. Right. This is Fernet Branca. Right. And it's popular among chefs. Chefs yes. drink this a lot. People yes. in the food business who have too much rich food, they like to have this in the morning after. Yes. Montreal Gazette um, wine writer Bill Zakarku is notorious to, whenever he travels, he, he travels takes it with, with a bottle of this. Yes. And you smell it and you think it's something you got from the pharmacy. Oh, yeah. It smells like after eights mixed with as crushed aspirins. Mm, it's it's not quite that bad. but okay, it's, I tasted this once. I'll taste it again. It's got the, a, a secret mix of herbs, of course. Oh, my God. It, it's awful. It's like <laughs> you dare people to drink this. It takes a while, but if you're not feeling very well and you have a couple of sips of that, I guarantee within an hour you will feel so much better. Yeah, but I'm suddenly not feeling very well. But that's okay. <laughs> Next time I'm sick, I'll try this. I don't know if I'm hungover if I'll try this, Well, it, it's very bitter. If you don't want to try that, you could have a few drops of, everyone's got a jar of Angostura somewhere in the back of their booze cabinet. You could just add a few drops of this to soda water. That's also good because the bitterness helps your digestive juices. Clean things out. So actually when you're having that Campari or soda or that Suze, that cocktail, it's actually good for you. Great. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Leslie.